Coming up in today's episode of the Internet Marketing Show. Keyword research. A free handy tool that gives you the information about your competitors' websites. And the best place to put your opt-in forms for maximum opt-ins. episode of the Internet Marketing Show at theinternetmarketingshow.com. We've had such an amazing response to the show and I'd like to start by giving you all a big thank you. It takes a lot of guts to jump out from the crowd and do something as radical as committing to a weekly show so your comments and suggestions have been very well appreciated. Which brings me nicely to last week's comments winner. Winners I should say actually this week. This week I've randomly picked out two comments from last week's show who will both receive a Logitech cordless keyboard and mouse. And the winners are Bert Wallace for comment number six and Chris Cabana for comment number eight. If you're one of the winners, we'll be in touch for your delivery details and we'll get them straight to you. Remember, by commenting on the show using the link above that says add your comment, you are automatically entered into next week's draw. The more comments we get, the bigger the prizes will be. Make sure you stay tuned each week to see if you've won. And now it's time for Ask Mark. Now again, we've had such a huge response from last week, it was hard picking a question to feature on the show. However, if your question isn't answered on the show, I'll try my best to answer them by email. This week's question comes from Sashila of www.basildonpediatry.co.uk and Sashila asked, I would love for you to go through looking at keywords on Google and learning to analyse the results, then putting the results on Excel spreadsheets. Well Sashila, I love the fact that you are willing to go back to basics and recover your keyword research. Keyword research is extremely important to an online business and even more important if you are thinking about starting an online business. So many people think about finding the product and then finding the market to sell it to. You'll have far more success by finding a niche market and then finding a product or service that the market is already looking for. That is providing that there isn't a huge amount of competition. Now, if you're already in business and selling online right now, Periodically going back to your keyword research can pay dividends as this can locate new pockets of traffic that are currently being overlooked by your competition. There are so many different tools online these days to help you conduct good keyword research but a great place to start is by using Google's free keyword tool. Simply do a Google search for the keyword tool and you should be able to find it. Now the idea behind keyword research is to find keywords relating to your website product or service that people are actively using in the search engines but not finding a great deal of sites delivering the product, service or solution. Start by making a huge list of keywords and keyword phrases that you think people might use to find your product or service. Also ask your friends and family what they would type into Google as people search for, for the same thing in many different ways. Once you have this list you can enter them into the keyword tool which will provide you with all kinds of information such as how many times each keyword was searched for in the last month, the monthly average and how many competing websites there are. The Google Keyword Tool has a scale which indicates how much competition there is for each keyword. Other services you might want to try are wordtracker.com, nichebot.com and keyworddiscovery.com. All these are paid services but also very useful. Whether you decide to save your keyword data in an Excel spreadsheet or not, it really is down to what you, know, what you want the system to work best for you. The main thing is that providing you periodically revisit your keyword research, you'll always have a grasp on how a particular market is searching, which is extremely valuable information, especially when it comes to pay-per-click, natural SEO, or any other traffic generation strategy. So, 
So Sheila, thank you. Thanks for your question and I hope that gets you started. And congratulations go to Sashila because as we used her question on the show, she wins three months full subscription to my Marketers Inner Circle, which includes a monthly printed entrepreneur newsletter and audio CD packed full of great marketing information and interviews with industry experts. So to get your question answered in our next episode of the Internet Marketing Show, simply click on the button above that says Ask Mark and submit your question. Now, to our next segment, Tool of the Week. This week, I thought I would share with you a tool that sort of goes hand in hand with Sashila's question. And it all comes down to research, and in particular, researching your competition. The tool I'm talking about is SEO Quake. SEO Quake is a free tool that provides you with valuable information about any website you visit and also any website listed on a Google search results page. It will display a whole range of information such as Google page rank, Alexa ranking, how many pages that site has listed in the search engines and how long the website has been live for, to name but a few. I highly recommend that you check out SEO Quake at www.seoquake.com the information it provides can be handy for researching a new market, discovering information about your competition, or finding sites that you may want to obtain either a standard or an affiliate link from. It's something I use in my business on a daily basis. Okay, it's that part of the show where I share a tip that has helped me with my online businesses. In the last episode we spoke about building a relationship with your visitors and using email autoresponders. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that the more opt-ins you get, the more good relationships you will build and eventually the more sales you will make. So this week I would like to share with you the best place to put your newsletter opt-in forms. Now also in our last episode we spoke about Google Analytics. I highly re recommend setting up a goal in Analytics so that you can monitor your opt-in rate and a percentage value before testing the various places for your form. So, where is the best place to put your opt-in form? Well, first of all, it should be in what we call the first fold of your website. This means when a visitor lands on your website, the opt-in form should be visible straight away, without the visitor having to scroll down or click on a button to see the form. Typically, the top right-hand side of your website works best, but I would test a couple of different places in the first fold of your website. With the help of Google Analytics to monitor the results, you'll soon find the best place for your opt-in forms. Well, that's all we have time for this week. Don't forget to subscribe to the show for regular updates at www.theinternetmarketingshow.com and please feel free to post your comments about anything in the show or anything you would like to see in the show in the future. Coming up in our next episode, how to get off to the best start with a brand new website. This week's comment winners will be announced and a fantastic tool for organising and automating your email newsletters. So I'm Mark Bowden, wishing you all the success with your online business.